Welcome to our next episode of Fandom Family Chats. This is a production of Family Fan Clubs on Facebook. You can find us all over Facebook. You can find us all over social media under Fandom Family Chats. Look us up, get dialed in, get plugged in, and get ready to listen to some crazy people talk crazy stuff. Hey guys, I'm Maureen. I'm Amanda. I'm Jeanette. And tonight we are talking This Is Us and Station 911. No. That was not what it's called. It's called no. 911 because I don't watch that Lone show. Stars. Yeah. I don't watch it yet. I don't watch it yet. So we're talking This Is Us first anyway. That's all you really need to be concerned about at the moment is This Is Us. Later on in our show, you're going to talk to 911 Lone Star and it's going to be just as fun. So we had the big one tonight. Not tonight, Tuesday. We had the big one on Tuesday. The season premiere of season six. This is us. This is the final season. The I last expect- season premiere. Ooh. I know. <laughs> I expected to cry more than I did. I did too. I expected actually more. I I, I, I did overall. cry, so I'm not really sure what's wrong. With what did you, you cry over? I cried over, like, well, I mean, Kate's kids singing to her. Like That made me cry. I did tear up. I, I didn't cry. I teared up. I didn't. No, I, I full on cried. Hurt. I must have been a baby this week. I don't know. I full on cried when Kevin's like laying, little Kevin's laying in bed talking about his mom and dad are going to die one day. Like, <sighs> see, yeah, I didn't hear that part either. because my kids were talking to me and my husband said, saying, and wait, was, what's this? Who's that? What's going on? Everything Kevin does, I, like, I relate to Kevin's character so hard. Mm-hmm. Almost everything that he feels in this show, I feel. So he makes me cry more than anybody else does. I feel a lot for Kevin. Like mm-hmm. I always feel, but I don't feel bad for young Kevin. I know this is going to sound really weird. I don't feel bad for young Kevin as much as I do for older Kevin. You want to know what? This episode made me a little bit because it's like we we event, we saw, and I know we're jumping ahead just a little bit. We'll dive in deeper, but we saw just that little clip of little Kevin, almost how he was already pushing it down, which makes me look at the other younger versions of Kevin in a whole new light in his actions. So it mm-hmm. started really young of him, like trying to push away his feelings and not show anybody anything. Yeah. That's so, Yeah. You can see that. Kevin's the best. I don't know what to say. And what I really liked about Kate's character this week too, is that she even as a little kid she was such she was so much concerned about other people yeah when kevin came in the bed i love the scene where she's just pulling out the pillow and putting it down for him that That was was just a different thing i love that and then when she's caring for everybody else and Mm -hmm. i don't know there's just that i i've always liked kate (laughs) but i haven't been like a huge whoa kate fan she hasn't been my favorite my favorite sibling but Mm -hmm. i really really like what she brought to the table this week i really did I'm a little mad though, because I know what's coming for her and Toby. And so mm-hmm. I was mad at her because look at what he's done for you. And now you're going to, you're going to leave him soon. Yeah, I know. They, and I, I, I think it's hard every time I see Philip too. I know. I, I want to punch him like, and I don't, I don't have like a reason you. to yet. <laughs> you know, though, here's the thing this week. And I, I don't even want to say this out loud. Okay. <laughs> and don't, but it's, there was a way that Philip looked at Kate and he had this look on his face and his kind of, he kind of has that smart ass attitude, which we know that I like. Um, it's a turn on for me. Not that I like him yet, but it was almost like a glimmer of, oh no, are you going to make me like him? Because that's going to really bother me if you make me like him. Was that when the kids were singing to her? Yep. And he was on the yeah, bench. He, he just, he had this look. It was just this tiny little glimmer of something that I was like, oh God. Mm-hmm. Yep. Don't make me like will. you because I'm not prepared for this. But I mean, think about it. We've seen the future, right? Mm-hmm. Toby's there. Yeah, so it's not like of. that. It's not like the relationship is like, I mean, in, he's still around. Yeah. But he's very depressed. I he could is. talk this whole episode about my theories of what I think is going on. I'm not going We're to. We're not going to do that yet. We're not going to do know. it yet. It's going to be so but hard. I, I have theories. <laughs> we are going to do that when they take their mid-season break, though. Okay. They are, even ready? though they only have ten, ep- we have like ten episodes this season. I don't even. Know. That's like that. it. Awful. I, I feel like that. I read that somewhere, but maybe I'm wrong. But it's even like last enough. year when they started in January, they still had a mid-season break. Yeah. So we know they're going to have that a mid-season break because we're going to we're going to take an opportunity to talk about what we think is going to happen. Okay. Amanda's researching for us. We can tell. <laughs> 
<laughs> I don't like that face she just made. It said two. <laughs> <laughs> Next week, all done. No more. No more. This is up. That's all. <laughs> That's all, folks. <laughs> but I like this week for with Kate and Toby. I, obviously, we see he's in San Francisco. We see that he's doing the long distance call. And while I get he's under pressure on the clock, and he's you know, and you see at the end of the episode that maybe that's the reason he was under such a time constraint because he was coming there. But I didn't like how he didn't even let her say anything at the end yeah no. that's i get that you're on our time constraint if that's the case you should have talked a whole lot faster so she could tell you that she loves you so she yeah. could feel like a human being rather than someone you're just doing something for and yeah. so that that really bummed me out but when she's talking to the massage therapist and she was like you know actually this isn't toby he's more the in-person big gesture kind of thing I knew so it. when the, he showed up at the end. I was actually, I actually would, oh, yay! And I clap my hands and my kids are like, too. what, why? Why you, why is that a thing? You, I'm not explaining five years of a show to you right now. This is exciting. <laughs> Just clap with me. Okay, see, I was excited for half a second. And then I remembered. I'm like, well. I know. <laughs> I know, what's the point? Should I get excited? excited? Yeah. <laughs> By the way, it's 18 episodes. This 18, season. 18, okay. So okay, around episode nine-ish, maybe we're going to break. And I, I do, I, Philip does entertain me. That scene where we first see him when he's talking to his girlfriend and he's like, I'm just not ready. And then she was like, give me a reason. You're boring. And then he goes into this long list of all the reasons why he can't stand her. And then he went, does that help? <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> but you know what? That also, like, see, I don't want to sit here and defend Philip because I don't like Philip and I'm not no. going to like Philip because he's not Toby. No. But that right there too it's like it showed a little layer to him that I mean obviously he was kind of being a jerk whatever because that's just his his mo but it almost sounded like he was doing this to like give the girl a reason to hate him I don't know it's like you y'all are gonna make me like him I think it's no I think he actually felt that way about this girl (laughs) I do too I think think that was him being honest Mm -hmm. exactly he kept trying to you know I know I don't an easy I, way I, I and do she not. kept pressing so he's like all right <laughs> yeah you know, which know. I mean is not a bad thing no Sorry. because he really wasn't affected at all when she left like he's like okay next thing yeah yeah so I don't like Philip because he's destroying nope. what I have spent five years building yeah. and me personally because I've written the show and have invested yeah. interest in the show but there's these these writers have spent five years building up a relationship that this dude's gonna come in and completely obliterate. This is so why I, I don't like him. This is why I still feel like I feel like it's not what we think it's gonna be. I don't think it's black and white. I don't think it can be. It better not be. They're better than that. It better not be. Yeah, I agree. And honestly, if Toby and Kate are not endgame in some way, I'm gonna riot. I'm gonna be yeah, mad. Same. I'm gonna be so same. mad. So well, I don't like Philip because of what his role is coming and what it's going to be. He is entertaining in the same True. way that, you know, someone I can't stand can make a funny joke. True. So, but I do the, the singing, the students singing. And when Philip was going out there, he's like, I just want you to know that I have nothing to do with this. No, no thing, whatever. I don't know what they think they're going to accomplish. This is stupid, blah, blah, blah. I think that was an ax. I think he was just trying to, brush off make absolutely certain that hey i don't like you still which yeah. i wish he would keep doing but when those students yeah. sang to her that was so sweet and it that's, was oh that song makes me emotional mm-hmm. every time i hear it anyways and so it just amanda you didn't even get teary-eyed no when they sing her really no you have you not remembered like this is us doesn't ever make me oh cry. that's true if you guys go back and listen to our podcast and this is us when we first started we were trying to find scenes that would make amanda cry <laughs> i think Especially, we found one we did i think it was the scene when rando had his breakdown oh i think you're right and what's funny is i'm the one that doesn't cry at stuff but this is us makes me cry more than any other mm-hmm. show so this is what's so strange because it's more tangible family emotion it feels and, real. yeah exactly yeah yeah and so that that part was really that was a that was a big thing for me and I was my kids are trying to figure out why I was because emo- I don't watch this with my kids usually but 
my kids' bedtime is past eight now. So <laughs> now they're <laughs> up and there with me. But it was, I thought, what a great way to show Kate her value that these kids love her that much. Ooh, getting emotional time a little bit. Yeah. And these kids love her that much that they want to bless her on that day. And they want to show her not only what she's taught them, what she's done for them, but who she is to them. And just, it was just so overwhelmingly good yeah. and sweet. And I loved it. I mean, I it's like it. these, these kids are the first time that we've seen Kate have a purpose. Mm -hmm. And it's just, it's beautiful. I don't know. And it's made me like, I was never a huge fan of Kate either, but in the last, I guess last season is when finally, like, I really started to like her. And I think it's her becoming a mom and then working for the, with these kids. Like. Yeah. But then I think they threw that teaser in at the end of last season because they're, they wanted to keep us in the same, do we like Kate or not like Kate right now? Because Toby's our guy. And if Kate is the one getting remarried, it was like, nope, we all hate Kate now. Kate's the worst. Yeah. But yeah but she's not and know. this brought reality to it and I think that even though we can kind of see that Kate and Toby I mean they're there's we know their struggles even though we didn't see a lot of it this week we saw little teeny tiny glimpses of it I mean they they're still giving us a really good example of a healthy functioning amazing relationship in in yeah. Randall and Beth I love Randall and Beth's relationship me too and I I used to always kind of be rocky about it Mm -hmm. but just like the further and further we get along I'm like man like, I used to always say like when I grow up I want to be like Jack and Rebecca no when yeah. I grow up I want Randall to be like and Beth. Randall and Beth <laughs> they I mean they by far have the healthiest relationship on mm -hmm. the show oh I yeah. mean just they are so like they I don't know it's like everything they mirror each other so well in just ways that like when Randall needs something she is right there to be his I loved how like she was expressing how she didn't really want him to go do this, but she was still his cheerleader and his decision. And I mm -hmm. just really love how they, they do that for each other all the time. And it's just, it's such a healthy relationship that I love it. Mm -hmm. They've always been my favorite couple on the show. Definitely there. <clears throat> and even when he did what he shouldn't have done and I was totally against it. Yeah. Letting that. When he shows oh, door yeah. number two. Yeah. Yeah. And I did not agree with that. I was kind of on Beth's side about it. But then she's just like, you know, so receiving to it. Mm -hmm. And just like, okay, I'm like, how? How are you that strong of a person? <laughs> That's what I don't understand because I feel like I would have just yelled at my husband over this. I know. I'm not as good a wife as Beth. And I mean, I need to be better. <laughs> I think it's, I don't think it's that we're not as good as wives. I think it's that we're not as, we're not as uh, healthy mentally as Beth is. We have some trauma and we have some damage that still kind of take over. Say? More that we're all traumatic and damaged. <laughs> <I'm just joking. laughs> but Beth recognizes he's a grown adult and she can't control him or make him do anything. So she's not going to get bent out of shape if he does something she doesn't think he should. She's going to voice her opinion. If he takes it, he takes it. If he doesn't, he doesn't. She can't do anything about it. So you know what? Go do what you're going to do. I think you're an idiot. But go do what you're going to do then. See how it works. Yeah. I couldn't do that because I have this obsessive need to control situations because I have a background and that kind of takes over sometimes. That's so yeah. OG Beth, like from season one and two, I actually, I was the odd man out in that I wasn't a Beth fan because hmm. I thought that she was too pushy with like, just the way she was with Randall. It was like, you're kind of a, you're kind of a jerk. And I didn't yeah. like, like when she wanted to, um, when he wasn't ready to quit his job or he quit his job or something. I don't remember what it was, what I had a problem with, but it was when she first started doing the dance thing mm -hmm. and Randall would make a suggestion of what he wanted to do. And she's like, no, it's not your turn. And I get the ideology behind it, but the way she addressed it, the way she handled it, the way she was like, no, it's my way or nothing. And you yeah. go do, you do, but I don't care. We're not partners. I'm going to do what I'm going to do. That bugged me at first, but it's because she understands that he is there. They are a partnership and he's, but still they're separate people. She understands that. And you can see that in this one where she gave him the options. And I actually really, 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 really loved Beth in this episode. Me loved too, yeah. her. Like I want yeah. to be her in this Me episode. Yeah. She's <laughs> phenomenal. I love when she was describing door number one and herself. And then she's going up the stairs and she looked at me and she went, mm, 
I would have shows door, door number Beth. one. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I would have chose Beth. Door Beth. Chose door number Beth. <laughs> I'm like, yes. oh, I probably would have chose door number Beth too. Like, God, that I would have that kind of confidence about myself. No, <laughs> like, no. no way. But, no, you know, I, I love said it. that. <laughs> but I also, even though, like, it's funny because if I was Beth, I would have not wanted Randall to do what he did. Mm-hmm. But looking at it from well, Randall, I, mean, I think I would have wanted to do the same thing that he did, though. Um, just because that's just who he is and that's who I am. I'm too trusting. I'm too, like, I want to give people a million different chances. And I don't think there's anything wrong with him doing that. I mean, yeah, he got let down, but at the same time, I mean, mm-hmm. at the end of the day, he's done what he felt was right, regardless of what other people did with his goodness. And that's yeah. what's important, I think. So he tried to do the right thing. Yeah. And I think Randall kind of knew it. Well, and I think that's why he was down the whole time, is I think he kind of knew the guy wasn't going to show up, but he also knew that he, in order for people to be better, you have to give them an opportunity to be better. And I think that's Randall's whole thing. I think that's kind of how he overdoes it in his help is he gives yeah. everyone an opportunity to be better, even when they aren't ready for that opportunity. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, I think we'll start doing look- some good work with the city. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. I think it's going to, I think we're going to see that huge turn this year. Yeah. I was going to say, this is like, it's just a little Beth just going back to her. I laughed so hard when she was trying to talk to, the kids like Deja and <laughs> <laughs> because when she was like try I mean I just felt it so hard you know because I mean Elena's getting to almost to that age where like she doesn't want me in her business with her friends and stuff and so it was just like you know she was trying to be like hip and cool and like and she's like oh okay never mind like, I just felt that so hard I was like, oh even when she was at first leaning so far to try to read the cell phone <laughs> Yeah, and they just get pulled further, further back. <laughs> Amy's so sad. I'm like, oh, girl. And even when she yelled though, she's like, oh, you're not, y'all aren't listening to me? Okay, okay. <laughs> just, <laughs> so I just love her little lines, because what was it? There was something else that just made me laugh just a little bit. When he was like, can I speak to you in the other room? She's like, well, it's kind of all one room, but okay. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I just like her little, I don't know. Beth is my favorite character on the show. I feel like if I didn't have all my trauma baggage that I'm trying to work through at the moment in the midst of all this cancer nonsense, I feel like my personality would be just like Beth. Yeah. Well, I would like to think that. That's, I I would just, I would like to think that's who I would be. That's more of, like, (laughs) I don't want to be (laughs) Beth. I'm probably, I don't even know who I'd compare myself to. I like, even when he comes back, I mean, when he came back to tell her about it, I was a little disappointed that she was so disengaged because I think for her, it was like his birthday was just as much about her as it was him because they're a partnership. But she, you could tell that she was upset that he did something else for his birthday other than spend it with her. And I get why you'd be upset about that. But on the other hand, it's Randall's birthday and he should be able to do what he wants, especially on his birthday. If Mm -hmm. that's, if he wants to help the city, he's going to help the city. And she was still kind, but I, I didn't like that. She wouldn't even look at him. I didn't like that aspect of it in the end, but she still responded to him while she flipped through a magazine and didn't look at him. Yep. And then she, the cufflinks he brought him. Those are the ones that were stolen, right? I think so. Those cufflinks she presented him with those. I'm pretty yeah. sure those are the ones that were stolen. Yeah, I think so. If I remember yeah. carefully. And I mean, if we look at that guy that was, that robbed their house, he was, not really cognizant of anything and i don't he randall said it was addict but it didn't seem addict so i didn't know if i I didn't think they made that clear enough that it was addict other than randall saying because to me it it seemed like he had mental issues more than addiction yeah but maybe it was more i mean maybe it's from addiction that he's got maybe some difficulties I don't or maybe know. he's yeah, addicted because he's got meant because a lot of people who have like schizophrenia or a lot of people who have that they True. try to numb out on on drugs mm-hmm. yeah yeah but i think that randall saw a little bit of himself in there that's why i thought they were going the mental aspect until randall said addiction because when randall had that breakdown like he had no control he yeah. didn't go rob people's houses but i think randall saw the potential for it to get worse if randall didn't have the opportunity for help that this guy didn't right. have and that Randall just, I love how Randall handled that too. When he's like, do you have any water? He's like, no, but I'll, I'll make sure I can get you some. So this yeah. last year you traumatized our family. Like, yeah. how, man, Beth and, can I just be Beth and Randall combined? Because there's no flipping way I would have reacted like that to that. There's no way. Mm-mm. He's just so good. 
you might have though i think you i mean once because i mean by that point you could already see that like the man had issues and so i think that was because i think randall was there to totally like just tell him how much he had hurt him and traumatized the family mm-hmm. until he saw what his situation was and then he just changed his tune mm-hmm. but i mean the fact that he was even wanting to speak to him in the first place mm-hmm. the way and as calmly as he did like I wouldn't have known from then that he was mentally challenged or that he had some issues that yeah. he was dealing with. I wouldn't have known at that point, but Randall handled it completely calm and relaxed the whole time. Legitimately just didn't want to have a calm conversation with the guy. Yeah. And I don't think I would have even done that. Yeah, I know. True. If I was as traumatized, I mean, I would like to, but if I was as traumatized as he was, I mean, he was having nightmares. He was having panic attacks. He was, I mean, Randall was, yeah. that year sucked. I don't know that I could have, in Randall's position, handled it that way, that calmly. Yeah. No, I agree. The challenger thing, too, with Randall, and that's just another yeah. aspect of how good he is. When he said that about the mom, I mean, he was sad. Uh, he was the first one at the dinner table to share how he felt. Mm-hmm. But then when he said to Beth or to Rebecca afterwards about <laughs> maybe we should just send them back and she's just in case they don't have food, like, I, I, I think that might have been another moment I cried when he said, do you think anyone's making them dinner? I was like, oh my God, I hadn't even thought about that little Randall, but now I am, you know, <laughs> like, oh my gosh. Uh, I love how this show brings stuff back. Cause just like how they were doing the clips of how Kevin talked about the challenger exploding, like in the very first episode. And then they brought it all the way like back. Like the first episode ever? Yeah. yeah, when he's with those two girls and he's supposed to be like, I guess. Oh, right. yeah, in the flashback. talking about the Challenger yeah. exploding. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. And so I the love very how beginning. They, I just love how they, they bring it all back like that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like, Amazing. I like Kate's when she opened the fridge and it's like the first the weight loss and yeah. now it's like the babies. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, it's, it's just like, I loved how they did that. It was really cool. Yes. The filmography, I think, in this is really, <clears throat> really, really smart. Mm -hmm. I think they've, I think they found a really, really creative, cohesive way to tell a story that I don't think has been done like this before. I mean, yeah, there's shows that have flash forwards and shows that have rewinds, but there's not shows where that is an integral part of the story where every episode has to have those components to it. And I think it's, it's something different that we haven't seen before. And I think it's the other reason why we gravitate to the show because it's good. It's well done Mm -hmm. and it's necessary to the story. And so it pulls you in that way too. And I think that, I like too with Rebecca when they're flashing back to her and Jack in bed talking about their kids. Yeah. She hits Randall right on the head. Yep. And I I once she I like that you're hearing that voiceover as he's standing outside that um mm-hmm. uh what is it, a soup kitchen, something? Yeah, or shelter wherever the shelter. shelter. Was it was a shelter. Yeah. Yeah. He was standing outside the shelter waiting for that guy, and you hear Rebecca's voice over saying that he is going to wear himself out. I don't remember how she said it, but something, how she said it was so perfectly describing the Randall that, and I mean, Sterling K. Brown is a master at portraying his character. He's so good in that role. It's ridiculous. Yeah. So he just, the embodiment of it, I think it's really nice that at the end of the season, we're getting these views from the parents intuitive enough Mm -hmm. to know them as adults when they were kids. Except for, I feel like they didn't know Kevin at all because they even said it's not like he's going to be a 40 year old man still talking about the Challenger explosion. And it was like, no, Jack man, said that though. That's what I'm saying. Like, but I'm well, yeah, Jack. Rebecca, but Rebecca had the accurate depiction of him. Yeah. It just, I mean, I'm like, oh, I wish someone, it's just another reason. I feel like just Kevin just he gets overlooked and people don't, they didn't pay attention to his needs. And this was a clear sign the way he was having no reaction to this but you know then again as a parent thinking i I probably would just if my kid didn't want to talk about it i might just move on too. like let's not talk about it then did jack say that well it's not like he's going to be a four-year-old talking about the challenger or did he say we don't want him to be a four-year-old talking about the challenger it's not like he's going to be a four-year-old see i misheard that line yeah i thought he was was, rebecca was concerned that he didn't show enough care about the challenger i thought jack was saying well we don't want him to be talking about this when he's 40 i oh yeah, it's not and see, like this is why be. I mean, like, I love Jack Pearson. Like, I'm mm-hmm. not, there's no slander here at all. But as far as like, I mean, he he was not as in tune with things as um, he was real, though. You know, yeah, no, yeah as parents, we say all the time, mm-hmm. and then we go back, we're like, yeah, probably could have worded that mm-hmm. a little bit differently. 
it yeah, makes sure. me so like paranoid about my parenting. Like, oh my god, am I doing a good enough job? Like, well, I think with Rebecca, every parent says that at least yeah. once a day. Yeah, like, what I, am I doing? I think with Rebecca and Jack, Rebecca was the intuitive one, and Jack was the one who was able to fix in the moment. She had she had vision for the future. He had vision for the present. Yeah, I think that's why they work so well. I think that's why they are goals for people mm-hmm. because. Rebecca was unable to fix things in the moment. She was unable to, to handle a lot of the heavy in the moment, but she could prepare for the future. Jack yeah. wasn't real good about preparing for the future, but he was better at preparing for the moment. And that's why they, that's why they're so good. Yeah. Yeah. I but I mean, with Kevin in LA, him and Madison, it's just it's kind of heartbreaking for me the way it stands at the moment. Oh man. I don't like this at all. Look, I was really at upset. All. That guy kept calling her Maddie and I was like, ugh. Stop like, calling not, her that. Yeah, That's not her name. No. So upset. But I mean, oh my gosh. And Kevin, I just, I don't understand why we're not together. Like, I understand why we didn't get married because you weren't in love yet. Mm-hmm. But clearly, like, there's, you feel something for each other. Yeah. So, like, I just don't understand it. Although I didn't get the feelings for Madison. So I'm kind of mad at her at the moment, to be honest. Well, I think Madison is hyper-focused on other things. I think she's not letting herself think too much about her and Kevin. Although she thinks about him enough to buy him a birthday present, remembering it's his birthday and that sort of thing. So I think she's, I think she does think about him, but I think she's, because of how they ended their relationship, which you're right, it shouldn't have ended. They just shouldn't have gotten married. Right. I think because of how it ended, she's trying so hard not to think about it because he's living in the garage, essentially. Yeah. Which I know is a terrible idea, but at the same time, like, I don't know. Wise up. Yeah. It's weird that he's in the garage. It's it's yeah. definitely weird that he wanted to do that. But I think that that tells you, like, I mean, this man is crazy about you. Maybe he's not in love with you, like, all that right now, but he's obviously crazy about you. Mm-hmm. Like, if you couldn't tell that from his reactions to, mm-hmm. what's the guy's name? What was his name? Elijah, maybe? I don't Eddie? know. Eddie? Eli? Yeah, he started with an E. I don't know. He's not important care. enough to remember because he's not going to stay. No, I don't care to know him. So don't worry. <laughs> we don't need him. That Maddie thing was running all over me for some reason. Like, I was so angry about it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And when, when they watched the show without Kevin, like, I would have been mad too. Ended. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, that well, was taking it too far, Madison, and you know it. <laughs> The thing is, I mean, like, I understand that they're not together and she doesn't necessarily owe him anything, but he is, I don't know. You knew he was going to be back. I just feel like you could have been a little more conscious mm-hmm. of, of what he was going to walk in on yeah, and how absolutely. that might make him feel. Or at least give him a heads up, like give him a warning, like, I don't know, something. Don't let him come in there blindsided like that. Lock on the door. <laughs> well, he could have done that. Yeah. Something. <laughs> Part of me feels, too, that this book club dude was being very pushy and Madison doesn't know how to say no. Maybe, but I I got the feeling she was enjoying every bit of it. As a friend, but I think that she, I don't know, I just, I don't think that she was being pushed over, but I think that this guy was pushing all night long to stay, to do, to to keep her company. He was pushing for it because she was ready to say goodbye to him at the table. And he's like, well, unless, unless I can help stay and do dishes. Well, unless I can stay and do this. So she tried saying goodbye to him a couple of different times. And he's like, well, hey, how about I stay and do this? He was the one who kept inventing yeah. reasons to stay. I don't like him. No, I don't either. And we know that Kevin and Madison are going to be together in the end. So I think so. Look, we know. We don't me, think we know. If you're not going to give me like Toby and Kate back together, you better give me Kate and or. Madison We're not going Kevin. that route, Jeanette. <laughs> <laughs> Telling you, I'm going to riot. But je- I think he's rightly jealous. Mm-hmm. I think I think it was disrespectful because yeah, it, that's your house. But didn't Kevin buy that house? Like, didn't they buy the house together? Uh, I don't know. Or was that already Madison's house? I don't remember how I they think got it there. It was already Madison's house, actually. So you know that your ex, who is clearly still having things for you, is there. Yeah. You know it, it. To to not to not let him know anything that's happening. To not care what he sees. It is disrespectful. Even if you don't have feelings for each other, it's still disrespectful. Yeah. yeah. He's but bringing maybe, your kids home. Maybe she doesn't know that Kevin still has feelings. I think she does now for sure. Yeah. 
That's um, true. But we know Kevin's the, the king of hiding everything. So he may have not given her any inclination. Like he may have not given her any reason to believe that he still had feelings until because even now he's clearly jealous, but he's not saying anything. He's not telling her, he's not expressing how he feels. He's just I mean he slipped it in there where he's like, I don't like that he calls you Maddie. Yeah, but <laughs> I don't know. I like that he spoke his truth. Mm -hmm. I want him to fight for her. I would like to see I that. I think he's going to start. She, I think she deserves that. Mm -hmm. You know? So. And something else we need to discuss. What do we think about the Manny? I, uh, I, you know, I think it's- <laughs> I have fun. Kevin I feelings mean, about that. <laughs> because I think, I think it's a good move for him to stay close to his kids. And I mean, it's a stable job. I mean, mm -hmm. I think it would show growth in just the way that he could like take on this this thing that he like threw a fit about and left like in the first season to just Episode. for his family step up and just it almost parallels like didn't jack take some jobs that he didn't want just yep. to take i mean i like when they parallel jack and kevin because kevin thinks he's so far from the man that jack was but yep. he's so much like him he is you know? i just really love that he is basically jack yeah <laughs> I hope he sees that one day. I don't I feel like he sees it. Yeah. He strives to be Jack so much. Yeah. That he doesn't see that he is. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The scene that, the other scene that made me cry, like hardcore, maybe like I had to pause the show to cry was when Kevin was outside that girl's house in the first season, actually lost his dad's uh, necklace and he's on the lawn crying like, oh my gosh, I can't, I can't. That was a hard even, one. Ooh, even they know that scene like brings tears to my eyes and he's screaming it's all i have of him like oh my gosh if no that was the scene that's the one that made me cry not that randall was the worst one. Oh, that was it i think that was like so most, terrible most of my tears have been with kevin throughout this journey i think i don't know that randall having a breakdown with kevin i mean kevin was involved yeah. kevin was talking about randall sobbed like that was oh yeah, my gosh awesome. i can't watch that one yeah. but i think you see Kevin's compassion and when he talks about his mom and dad are going to die. And like, I didn't realize they said that because again, my kids were there annoying. I can't watch TV with children in the room when I want to be serious. Yeah. So I didn't actually catch that part. Well, I liked that too, that it was happening at the same time as Kate is giving him like the pep talk. And it was just, it showed that they've had that like tight bond mm -hmm. from like, since they were tiny like just showing him crawling in bed with her was just like, oh my gosh, this is the cutest thing ever. Like she's kind of always been there to take care of Kevin. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's almost mm -hmm. like she's the only one that ever really, that's ever really known the true Kevin. Yeah. You know? Absolutely. So that's kind of sweet. But I but loved what, her words too. Like what was that scene? Tell me about that scene. Cause I missed, I don't like, I don't remember him saying mom and dad are going to die one day. Oh, well, it was when he went to her house and he was going to stay there and he was just talking about, I think he was just feeling sad and she was reminding him of where they were um five years ago dad. and then so then it, it kind of flashed at that same time to them laying in bed like when he crawled in the bed and she he, i don't remember what she said to him but then he said you know mom and dad are gonna die one day mm -hmm. i know <laughs> what a sad thing for a boy that age to be thinking about well yeah that's what made me think i'm like oh my god do my kids think this like that's just horrible that that's in their head you know I don't even like to think about that. Like, I don't know. My kids have been handling my, di my cancer diagnosis really, really well. And I've been really impressed. And my yeah. middle child, Jane, who's eight, came out to me yesterday, the other, uh, it was Wednesday. And she said, does breast cancer kill people? Aww. Um, Yes, but it's not going to kill me and I'm going to be fine. And like, but I, she's, they've handled it so well. Yeah. that I didn't think that I was like oh well then they must be no I'm gonna be okay but it doesn't necessarily mean that and I think Kevin really portrayed that or the writers wrote that really well to portray that that's you know that's where kids heads are at yeah and yeah. they don't always tell us what they're thinking you know mm -hmm. so oh I'm gonna be sad okay let's move on <laughs> <laughs> so I guess we, there was, um, this is why Kevin's story is so sad mm -hmm. because of this one right here. Gosh. Um, but anyways, there's someone missing, obviously that we noticed in Kevin and Madison's house. Uncle Nicky is no longer living there. He's living <laughs> with Rebecca and Miguel, which, which I is think hilarious. is hilarious. <laughs> He's driving her insane. I love the end when she's like, Nikki, you want to go see her? I have a headache. Let's pack and pay and go tomorrow. And Miguel's like, Bex, no. I'm sick of this and I have a headache. 
I love it. But I love, like, even Miguel. But Miguel's just such a nice guy that he just kind of, whatever. <laughs> well, when they were at the train station, he said something about Sally. He's like, yep, you tell us every day, Nikki. Every day. <laughs> He's like, I told you all her right, Sally. And Nikki, we're going, yep. Every day. <laughs> <laughs> every day. Oh, I kind of love it. I hope they're like the best of friends. That's what I'm hoping to see by the end of the season is that Nikki and Miguel are like besties because I just think that would be the funniest thing ever. But I think that I like that they're become, and I like the redemption there because Miguel was Jack's best friend and now he's yep. Nikki. Uh, Miguel is Nikki's best friend, certainly. I mean, just imagine how happy like Jack, like looking down, like seeing that. That would just make yeah. him, oh, I love it. It's making Nikki a whole again, which is all Jack ever really wanted, but didn't couldn't couldn't get there. And I think that's why Jack stopped talking to Nikki because he couldn't make him whole. Yeah. <laughs> just, I love that he is so like I even love that while at the train station, he's carrying around his iPad <laughs> or his computer. Like he's my mother in law does that. He's got a Facebook stalker, you know? He's, he's a Facebook, Facebook stalker. The so Facebook. much so that he carries it with him. He doesn't even put it in the locker at a zoo. Like there's Lockers at the zoo that he can put it in. He doesn't put it there. He carries it with him through the park. What are you going to do when you're at, looking at the lines? You're going to be on Facebook on your iPad. Maybe like it's just it's so like that's my mother in law's camera. So she takes her iPad everywhere. I'm like, <laughs> okay, <laughs> it just it's just so cute and it's, <laughs> I like it. and I love how hardcore he's stalking Sally because I want him and Sally to be a thing so bad, so bad. Well, at the yeah. end when they showed the. I can't talk about that, but I was excited. I was, I, that's enough. There was two moments where I cheered in this episode. One was Toby, the other was Nikki. I outright cheered yeah. and clapped my hands and like yelled, like, Woo-hoo! well, hopefully. <laughs> Toby chops up. And I like that he, I mean, for Nikki to be a part of, because he didn't have to go with Miguel and Rebecca. He could have stayed in the house and Facebook stalks Sally, but he yeah. went out with the kids. With And it's just uh, looking at him doing that compared to when we first met Nikki, where he's in that trailer that has holes and he's, can't get out of the bottle and just refusing to be around anyone ever period that he willingly went out with Rebecca and Miguel and two small children mm-hmm. to have a day at the zoo around other people and not shut up. <laughs> like it was just a constant stream of yeah. talking. <laughs> I love Kevin saved his life. Yes. Mm-hmm. That's another way that Kevin is like Jack. Yep. Yeah. He's, I, I hope that it's some, I hope that by the end of the season we see that pointed out to Kevin and Kevin receives it yeah. and knows the truth of it. I but think I, Rebecca needs to tell him that. I feel like that's the one I person so too. that needs to tell him. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I think she'll be able to, even though she, I mean, we could see in the zoo thing that she's struggling clearly, but I think that through that, maybe it'll have her say all the things that she needs to say. Because mm-hmm. she was struggling hugely in this episode. Hugely. Oh, man. It was devastating. Mm-hmm. Watching her, I mean, I feel like I teared up on some of that too because just the thought of like not being able to remember such a, a oh. word that like you've obviously, I mean, this was your kid's favorite book. You've said this word a million times. Like that would just be agonizing, I think. Just to, and the way we watched her through the whole episode, like the whole time trying to remember was just, yeah. oh my God. It was really, really devastating. Yeah. I just kept wanting to yell for her. I did mm-hmm. too. And I loved how like, patient oops. Miguel was. Because when she said, don't tell me, I gotta didn't admit, if, if my husband, I would be like, it's a caboose, okay? It's a caboose. <laughs> I, don't know I, would be, I don't know if I, if I have it in me to be that compassionate and that patient with someone. So, like, I love Miguel for that. That's mm-hmm. awesome. That Absolutely. Let her do it and figure it out. Yeah. And her, you know it had to be bugging him, too? Because he had to be able yeah. to see her face the whole time, you know? He, and he, well, we see that on the train where he's watching her. And then we yeah. see at the at the dinner, he, he he doesn't watch her the whole time. He's engaged with the family, but he's watching her. And that's, I think Miguel is the best person she could have at the end of her life because that's the kind of person he is, is he picks Absolutely. up on her little nuances that other people miss because he is a very watchful person. He's quiet compared to the Pearsons yeah. because he's watching. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. It, it had to be heartbreaking for him to know that this was killing her. Mm-hmm. And it was. When she had that outburst at the table, oh my gosh, I got really emotional when she did it. Like, I felt so... Yeah. I can't even imagine what that felt like for her. Mm-mm. Yeah, because I mean, I'm sure it was embarrassing that you like shouted that out, and then like, I don't know, when your kids are like terrified for you, like. And it also meant she had to tell them medical information on herself. That one, I'm sure she didn't want to tell them on their 41st birthday. Yeah. 
that she was progressing. Yeah. But two, I don't think she was ready to tell them at all at that point. But her outburst kind of forced her into having to tell them. Yeah, I know. Man. At the end so- of it, when she finally said the word and she just whispered it, I, I did I did cry a little bit there. Ugh, this was a it. sad episode. I cried what? a lot. Okay. I, I just okay, I expected the first time, the first episode I ever saw, the, the first couple episodes, like I like sobbed. And the, yeah. f- the first two episodes, as I watched it live five years ago. Yeah. So I expected that for this. And that's why I thought I would cry more. Yeah. Because I was expecting, but I feel like it's going to be a slow burn where the pain is just going to intensify as the season goes on, I feel like. Yeah, probably. <laughs> they, they had to soften us a little bit first going into this because <sighs> it's about to get a whole lot worse. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Agreed. They're about to puncture our heart and just dig it in i mean we're so invested in these (laughs) they're people they're not characters we are so invested in these people you know this is it's so funny because this is a show that when it's not on i don't think a whole lot about it you know Mm -hmm. i just don't but man as soon as i like see an episode i am so heavily involved in these characters that it's like i feel like that's my brother or you know Mm -hmm. like I get really into it, but it's just funny because it's not one of those that I sit and think, "Ooh, I'm gonna watch This Is Us today." Like, I don't no, do that. I will no, never rewatch the show because I can't. Probably not, unless I, I'm rewatching yeah. with someone just because I want to show somebody the yeah. show. But I don't think I would ever rewatch uh-huh. on my own. No, but man, I'm. Invested. I tried. <laughs> I never have. I can't. I can't. Nope. You know what? I did make it through the first season. It was pretty cool to watch it again because it was cool to pick up on like things that they threw in there that they were mm-hmm. planning on bringing back. Yeah. You know, yeah. like the challenger thing. So like, that's kind of fun to go back and see what they had in there all along. I think yeah. that's the reason I like this show so much. The writing is spectacular. It's so good. Oh, yeah. To have it lined. I mean, they had to have an outline for, I don't think they have an outline for every se- every episode before the season, but they have an outline for every single season and did before the show started. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They knew where, I, I mean, to ha- to be able to write it that way, it's just, it's so well written. It's ridiculous. Yeah, it's really impressive. And that's probably why I like Only Murders in the Building so much because same dude, yeah. Dan Fogelman, is involved uh, in both of those pieces. I still yeah. need to watch that eventually. Oh, it's so good. It's so well written. I think they're doing their filming season two right now. Mm-hmm. They are. So, what do we think? I mean, next week, have you all seen the previews? What do we think yes. is going to go on with Rebecca and everybody else? I think the previews mainly I, remind me because I feel like the, I got so excited over Nikki and Sally that he knocks at her door and he's like, hi, Sally. I got so excited about that. I don't remember anything else about the That's preview. That's kind of all I remember. Uh, Deja. Deja. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, she went to go yes. visit. Uh... Oh, my gosh. Malik. 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 Jeez. What I wanted to call him Micah. I was like, That's not right. What does he say? He says something about how she looks, and it was oh. just the best word ever. And I can't remember what it was now. I was. I, I love Malik. Me too. too. I love him, mm-hmm. and I actually really. I think Deja is my favorite Pearson sister. She's mine. Those three. Yeah, she's mine. Although she's mine. I like Annie. I just don't know enough about Annie. I really. don't know. Yeah, so, that's my I mean, problem. Not as, yeah. I don't like Tess. I, like I Tess think she's too. mouthy. I don't know. I like them all. Tess is going through something right now. Uh-huh. Well, Tess is at that age. I mean, don't we? We see her as an adult. She seems like perfectly respectable and functional. Yeah. I think she's just at that mouthy age. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It was that one episode where she came at Rebecca. I was like, mm, nope, or not Rebecca, at Beth. I was like, mm, nope, I have problems well, with you. But I mean, Deja, when she first joined the family, she was probably that age. And she uh, was Deja had a little bit more of a reason. Yeah. Yeah. But doesn't every teenager feel like their life? sucks and like they have a reason to be mouthy i know i did and my my life but didn't the suck. difference is deja did <laughs> test doesn't well, i know that's what i'm saying though but i felt that way even though my life wasn't all that bad like i still felt like it was you know whoa well, me and i world. was tortured you know yeah you're not going to convince me that tess is likable no, right now no because i think she's a normal teen so no i mean yeah, even I in the smart. in our facebook group there's everybody agrees with how they feel towards tests right now and i think that will change yeah i think it, i think it's fine because like I, as you said as, when we see adult tests i do like her adult tests yeah I I think. Think. great this episode i even i mean i know we didn't see much of her but her and deja seemed i mean it's not like she was like rude or i mean she was just being normal like okay mom like no yeah she seemed fine this episode yeah so i think we're good 
I think so. I'm excited about the Boston thing, but I think I I don't think anyone is more excited about anything than Mickey and Sally. I mean, yeah, I was pumped, I and I like this when they're packing and they're putting things in the van. I love I love Rebecca and Miguel's commentary on what to bring and <laughs> that sort of stuff. <laughs> I can't wait to see. Oh my gosh, I can't wait to see the road trip. Oh my gosh, it's gonna be so much fun to watch Miguel and Nikki us. and Rebecca in a car. Oh, they're gonna show us. I hope it's a road trip. Or are they flying there? So, no, either way, probably, their well, no, trip. I don't think they're that far. The three of them in a in anything in any sort of transportation together for a long period of time, I think, is comedy gold, and I cannot wait to Definitely. see it because Nikki has been a favorite of mine since he asked Kevin to pack his puzzle for him. <laughs> I cannot wait for that. I'm so excited about that. I'm so excited because from the moment in season five, right? It was season five when he was when we saw the backstory of Nikki and Sally. Yeah. Mm-hmm. From that moment, all of us are like, he's going to meet her again. He's going to meet her again. That's it. Yeah. He's going to meet her. Yes. And we were all so excited. So this is just like everything we've been waiting for for like yeah. six months. Because I think that that's why he's wearing a wedding ring. I think him and Sally are married in the future. Mm-hmm. I think, I think so too. Yeah. Well, why isn't she there then? Maybe really? she is. We haven't seen everybody in the house. Maybe she's taking a nap. She's old. Yeah, Maybe she's it is dead. nighttime. <gasps> <gasps> Amanda! What? They're old. <laughs> yeah, they aren't they as old as Rebecca. Story. They're not as old as Rebecca. And Nikki's the younger brother. Oh, that's true. She's so, just napping. That's true. Yes. She, she's in bed for the night. It's like 1030 at night. It's true. Oh, everybody's there and Sally's just like conked out on the next room. Maybe she just flew out and it's tired on her old body. I, I think Miguel is excuses. napping too, but I'm yes. just saying. Yeah. Miguel is there. He's there. He better be there. <laughs> you cannot kill two of Rebecca's husbands. That's just mean. No. Yep. Please Agreed. don't do that. <laughs> that's, take, that's, that's some Grey's Anatomy stuff. <laughs> <laughs> so next week is going to be really good. So next week is going to air on Tuesday... Eight nine eight or nine eight central, mm-hmm. which tripped me up because I thought it was eight seven central. So I was all excited to watch it at seven, and it was not. Nine. So I did the same you, thing. You're the watching this is us. Yes, Whenever you're watching this is us. NBC Tuesdays nine eight central, and this is where I duck out because right. I watch my show. Bye. Bye. It's good talking to you. I wish you would watch nine one one Lone Star with us, and you could stick around. But she'll get there. Even though we're saying goodbye to you, we're going to be saying hello to Tiffany here in just a minute, who's going to join us. And you know, to be fair, I did start watching Lone Star. I just didn't get past the first couple se- the first couple episodes of the first season, so I would have nothing to contribute. Tiffany is joining us to discuss this. So welcome, Tiffany. Hello. Hi, Tiffany. And also, goodbye, Tiffany. Goodbye, Mike. <laughs> have fun talking to your Lone Star. I'll join soon. Okay. Yay. So this episode, the season three premiere, um, I had a lot of high hopes for it. And then a lot of stuff didn't happen, but that's okay. I Thank think it, it led into some good stuff. So I think we're okay there. Um, I was kind of bummed with this episode. Yeah, a little bit. Mm-hmm. I was too, you know? I was expecting. Well, we were like, expecting what we saw in the preview. and that's Yeah, they like happened. ramped you up. Yeah, and then so. the end was just crazy. Not even going to get there yet. Yeah, but it was BS. Is what I'm saying. But what the first thing we see is we see like Owen. Oh, he's like you know, we're fighting to get the 126 back. Um, I loved that. Why can I not remember his name? I just want to call him like Daddy Swan, and that's not his name. <laughs> I was um, going to say Billy. Billy but- <laughs> it's not Billy though, right? You know, it is Billy. It is, is Billy. it actually Billy? It okay, actually cool. is Billy. Yeah. <laughs> I should remember that because that makes it easy. That's his real name. Okay. I know. So I Billy. was I was kept saying Billy Burke. I was like, it's not Billy Burke. It's just Billy. Got just- okay. <laughs> He's got a black eye. So I thought that was kind of awesome. Even though I I do like him. I like his character. I think it's because I like the actor that I can't not like him. Same. Even though he's kind of a jerk. Um but yeah, so Owen's all gun ho like he's gonna fight for the 126 and then He's like some mountain man, like living by himself. So that was odd. Looking kind of good. Looking yeah, real good. Gotta though. say, I how do you strand like the mountain man look? <laughs> no, he, he definitely looked good. Yeah, I think he's almost enough. able to join my pool. Oh, well, I mean, Rob Lowe's been able to join my pool for a long time. <laughs> Very long time. 
Well, I mean, I love some Rob Lowe. Don't get me wrong. St. Elmo's fired back in the day. Like, good Ooh. to go here. I haven't seen them forever. Yeah, so he's, oh, I don't know. There was a lot that happened, like, out there. I feel like, like, we met that woman, which I kind of felt like, what was the point of this? So I don't know if we're introducing. He's going to have to come back. Like, right. I don't know. I you thought it was going to be his new love interest. Well, last time we saw him, he was going to date that doctor, which I thought was going to be cool, but I guess that didn't work. I don't know. And then he finds that man out in the mm. snow after, well, Buttercup, I guess, found it. So I love Buttercup so much. Best then, dog uh, ever. I was like, follow the dog. The I know, dog right? talking to you, follow the dog. <laughs> There's something. Um, so yeah but like he's you know i don't know what i honestly the whole there i I didn't feel like the mountain kind of scenes gave me that much Mm -mm. in the episode but i did get really mad at marjan (sighs) for driving up there in that you know what though i know and here's you know i was like marjan is not going to take no for an answer though like she's the only one that's left like she's she's fighting for this 126 she doesn't care about anything else right now and i'm proud of her for that mm-hmm. she is. Um, i really liked her this episode she was fantastic i, I love her she's one of my favorites on the show anyways same oh um, yeah i love her anytime anybody's being to her i get so upset yeah yeah like if somebody does like with the bowling the bowling pin <laughs> bowling it's a pin? bowling pin <laughs> I'm, yeah, I'm not understanding. What's the, what what's the big thing? <laughs> the wrecking ball. Thank you. I was like, Tiffany, you know what I'm trying to say right now. <laughs> I have no pin. idea what she, she was trying to suffer say. over here. A little bit smaller. <laughs> what? Okay, the wrecking ball. Same shape, kinda. No, not that a yeah. maybe than a, a bowling ball. Yeah, maybe, maybe the bowling ball. Not but a bowling pin. It kind of goes like this. <laughs> I thought it was just okay. a ball. Okay. I don't know. Y'all need to live inside my head for like a day. I don't know if I'd survive. <laughs> that sounds scary. <laughs> one day, just live in my head. I was like, I should, I, I should be one of those people on TikTok who, like, films like their day, kind of like narrates their life. You know how people do that? Yeah. I was like, man, that's how I go viral. Do it. Is Amanda cleaning? Oh. Is hilarious. Like, I will I half like make you're... a bed. And then come back three hours later and finish it. Oh my god! But I will have mopped the entire house and done four loads of laundry, and maybe three dishes got done before I forgot about that again. And it it's insane. But let's go back on schedule. Talk <laughs> to Marjan when she came in there to like talk to like Paul and Judd. I was hilarious because they were both like, "Oh no, here she comes!" Like they knew they were in trouble as they should be standing her up and not helping her like do this i wish more people would help her i mean everybody wants the 126 back she seems like she's the only one that's still fighting for it she is that that stinks don't understand they're so good together as a team yeah i didn't understand owen's like motivation for not i mean like yeah suck it up man like your pride like why are you not signing this i don't understand yeah I, I, yeah i'm not getting that either well like he's also saying like you know i i think he's doing it this is my theory i don't think he's gonna sign it because he doesn't want to be there anymore without the 126 and he's convinced that the 126 is going to be demolished he doesn't want to be reassigned to another yeah firehouse i think yeah. he's just i think he's hurt you yeah. know he had all this in new york he was high up and then they beg him to come down here and then they just like rip it out from underneath him once he's like built this firehouse up i mean the whole thing is pretty outrageous yeah and i don't know what word i'm trying to think of right now but outrageous it's just my the, the word i keep wanting to go to is stupid like it's just stupid like yeah. it's outrageous no, it's it stupid, is. and i don't know I know the writers are going to go somewhere with it. I know it's it's all going to be fine. He's the star of the show. Yeah. But 
I don't know. In the meantime, I'm very angry. (laughs) Yeah, because I don't know how they're going to get, like, in my mind, I'm trying to picture scenarios of how we'll get it back, because I know we will. I mean, obviously, like, we have to, but I can't picture a scenario where all this is going to work out, and so I don't know where we're going with this, I guess. Yeah. I think what makes me the most mad is that they're using his own, you know, like, the, the, oh my god, what did he do? something in the budget like he basically yeah the budget he put together they're Mm -hmm. using his own budget against him to get rid of his firehouse really i know it's like billy you may have done it this time to where i can't like you i mean i don't know i want i like like that judd said he wouldn't he wouldn't go to billy i love that especially because him and judd have been friends for a lot longer so that was well i appreciated that too that says something right there Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. judd is done with him Mm-hmm. And, oh, oh, we're not there yet, are we? <laughs> I was gonna just say, um, cute. What's his wife's name? Oh, Grace. Grace, Grace. looks so cute. <laughs> Grace, I love her so much. Is she even on our list to talk about? Something? No, no, because you know there really wasn't a whole lot with I'm her. I'm gonna mention her now. Grace looks cute and pregnant. She, she definitely does. did. Yeah, I like when she was making fun of Judd's elephant <laughs> <laughs> in the nursery. <laughs> Calling it a rhinoceros. It, it really didn't look like an elephant, though. I'm just going to go ahead. Like and... rhinoceros. Yeah, no, it did not look like. Yeah. But how cute was it that he was painting the nursery? So I think no. that's that's okay, anyways. You know. Yeah. She's so excited to be a dad. No, but they. Uh, I, I just love her. How you know he just totally cut out on her, like on the phone too, and here she like doesn't even panic. I would be like an emotional wreck, like. But I guess she deals with it all the time, so she's probably just used to it, you know well to me I, I was thinking about that too i was like oh man but yeah. i mean they were kind of breaking up for a minute they both know the weather they both know the yeah and the i mean thing. she's at the call center so if something major happens she's gonna find out about it because they're gonna call 911 probably so it's all good but um um while we're talking about the rest of the way 26 did anybody else get so excited when they like well i guess we're not quite there yet talking about mateo oh we'll talk about him in a minute we will but yes yeah um so pretty much let's finish up marjan all right so he's the the only one fighting Mm -hmm. but the only thing we really haven't spoken about is the end Mm -hmm. that accident yeah yeah that didn't look good when the airbag deployed in her face yeah oh i know i was like oh that hurt yeah but it (laughs) been there that hurts (laughs) but it didn't seem like a life threatening right accident you know it just seemed like she got it probably knocked her out yeah Mm -hmm. probably the worst case is the fact that she'll be she might get stuck out there might be the thing that'll be the worst for her that's what i think is gonna be i think i don't think like that that wreck that like wouldn't kill her right i wouldn't think i mean the airbag did look at her really bad i was like oh yeah but I can't wait till next week. I need to figure out what's what happened. Really, oh, yeah. I live in Texas. I live through this. Like this stuff really <laughs> happen. Like some some of this stuff that they were bringing up. I was like, oh man, you You're guys so are crazy hitting what? us hard. I mean, that was that a, is how was, it was. Was that how it was? Like, I mean, they exaggerated it obviously a little yeah. bit. But, I mean, we had like a hundred and thirty eight car pile up wow you know though like because kentucky got hit with a snowstorm today we have seven inches of snow outside which we get snow rarely do we get over six inches of snow i mean like i can only i mean there's not many times you know Mm -hmm. um there was a huge pile up like on like one of our interstates and i mean they showed a picture of it i swear that i mean i saw at least 50 cars like in this picture of like it was bad because i know like my cousin's um mother like she was I mean she wasn't in the accident but she was like stuck and one of my husband's boss like just stuck for hours on the interstate because they can't get anywhere so sounds miserable it was bad here too so I I agree and it was kind of funny that we just watched this episode and then we get hit with a snowstorm that we're not used to either you know so did you stock up on food I did and I went I got a grocery order yesterday milk and bread gotta get that you know that's all you got no I got a bunch of stuff (laughs) milk and bread that's it 
I got way more non-essential stuff. I got chips and salsa and cookies and, you know, all that kind of important all stuff. The snack well, that stuff. seems essential to me. Yeah. Well, when the kids are home, virtual school for a couple of days, I, I need these snacks. So because they don't stop eating. Hide them. <laughs> I like to tell them that they need to use their school stomachs and not their home stomachs when they're around here, because those are two different things. <laughs> I was like, how do you guys live during school? As I'm saying, like, use your, that's what you need to tell them. That's what I tell them all the time. Use your school stomach today. Okay. I mean, no wonder my kids come home and eat like 15 things. <laughs> they're hungry. <laughs> and then thing. like they're home from school and they come to me like 1030. They're like, Hey, it's lunchtime. I I'm know. like still sitting there with my cup of coffee in my pajamas. I'm like, cause it's lunchtime for them. I know mean? it's lunchtime. It's t- well, this is my lunchtime at school. Well, that's too early. I'll talk to the school. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> Agreed. Um, yes but all right so the 126 everybody's kind of gotten spread yeah. right which some of them are together which yeah I'm happy about yeah. but yeah. some are separated and oh this is like when uh can we talk about mateo now i want to talk about mateo <laughs> yeah because he's the only one that's split up from them I think it, that's what I'm trying to think of. I was he is. trying He's to real one. fast go through my head. Yeah, because Paul, like, Judd, and Marjan are all at the other one. But poor Mateo was having such a hard time last season with that mean old like captain. Yeah, but, but after he so saved sweet. the day in the dust storm, yeah, he obviously got the recognition he deserved. Because when they said we're going to put the best bait on the job, I was saying, oh, please let it be Mateo. And then he came out and I literally cheered. I was like, oh, Mateo. I was so excited. I was happy. Yeah. Because like, he would, that would make me mad so much last season. I was like, y'all need to leave him alone. Like I was getting angry. Yeah. Ready to come through the screen on that captain. I was like, you need to leave the boy alone. Mm-hmm. I want to interview yeah. that guy. Right. <laughs> come on here. I want to talk to you. <laughs> You're getting oh, a poor good guy. Mom Doesn't he always to? play like kind of a jerk? I feel like he always plays. Like, wasn't he on Supernatural or something? Yeah, I'm pretty sure he was. Uh, he wanted to. Like, I'm trying to know. think back. We'll I haven't that seen all of Supernatural though, so I haven't either. So I think it's one of the earlier seasons. It would have to be. Mm-hmm. I need. Gosh, I need to watch that show. So I bad. can't put that kind of commitment. I want to, but I'm like, I can't. Can we That's do it together lot. one day? Well, not one day. Maybe one year. <laughs> it's not gonna be anytime soon. I got. I got more stuff to watch right now, but. I I've watched watch all of the seasons in Emily in Paris is what I'm doing. All right of them now. in two months. How did you do that? What's your secret? I need to do that. <laughs> you didn't do anything. Did you, you have a child? I, I did, like, did literally nothing else. Tiffany, <laughs> if you can do that, you could do Grace. I did. I mean, I pushed it to Grace that. in eight oh, months. Oh, do Grace. Please do Grace. It's one of my favorite That's shows that is ever exciting made. to me. It's supernatural. <laughs> yes, it, it was, is. You know, it, has it way wasn't more drama. Me. It wasn't to me either, but you like the resident. You like these lone stars. I think you would like Grace Anatomy. I do. I watched like the first two seasons. No. Oh. Whenever mm-hmm. Izzy left, that's when I stopped watching because I like Izzy. <laughs> me too. See, Tiffany, we would like all the same people and you know it. See, like, I don't know. How do you watch Grace up until a certain point? <laughs> I was just so mad that Izzy left. So I'm like, you know what? Mm, I'm Ugh. not watching you anymore. See, to me, like, I like Izzy, whatever. But I, there was, there's still so much show after. When does Izzy. she go? When does she leave? Like five or six? No, oh, six. No, that's, it's not the end far. of six. Oh no, like six. Is it really? Like six yeah. through like what? Like eight or like the sweet spot? Like actually, yeah. in my yeah. opinion, it's the best seasons. Though they are, yeah, because that's when you have like that's big Mark. That's Mark, and that's April and Arizona, and all my favorites. Yeah. Like yeah, that's when they all start coming in starts getting real right. good the magic at least it goes try out two and more seasons women. and then let us know what you think that was so many years ago and i'm gonna have to just start all over at the might beginning well. oh well, <laughs> might not, as well. Not yet, i want to play my play yet. she's got to watch teen wolf first oh my gosh. so i forgot we put grace and adam more down on your list didn't we you That's did yes unfortunately what are you watching right now <laughs> right now friday night lights that's <laughs> acceptable too. before that teen wolf <laughs> i'm not getting any updates about friday night lights though well i'm she just did it for the interview tomorrow <laughs> i'm just doing this for tomorrow oh 
because she's got to jump in my spot so she's just finding the guy here i'm hoping i can get on yeah well tiffany watch up because maury might get you (laughs) i can't i mean there's no way my husband and the kids are gonna be home there's it's gonna be a disaster around here so I'm thinking this guy is going to think I'm a complete idiot because I'm not going to know who he is. No, we have Maureen. She's just going to keep it going. And Maureen's the queen of like just pretending, so it's fine. It's true. She is great. At She'll bullshit. Bull- she's not even listening to us. That's, she's the queen of. Oh, so. yeah. Oh. oh. <laughs> she's telling us to keep it. You can hear us. Everybody's you stop. texting. I thought you weren't paying attention. Okay. <laughs> get in trouble, guys. All right. We need to get back into the medic so, team yeah so we've gotten like you know all the 126s split up but we got our med team has managed to um stay together which is cool mm-hmm. um the way they stay together is by working for some private company which seems terrible yeah when that guy like i love tommy though when he was trying to tell her to like push drugs on like these patients i mean she was basically like not having any part of it no she yeah. wasn't i love it loved she it took her snickerdoodles though which i don't blame her i would have taken my <laughs> snickerdoodles too right her favorite cookie They're the best <laughs> so Thank good you know but then we got this is where we find out too though that carlos and tk have split up which is really upsetting and i didn't like that at all no. wait i <laughs> missed that how did you miss that? That's oh, how did I miss that? Where was I? I watched the whole thing. I don't know. They're not together, sure. but we don't know why. <laughs> what? Here's the, that's my reaction. And I'm going to go ahead and say it. I guarantee it was TK's fault. I don't know why, but I just think it was. Oh, it was. It was. It was, it was totally fault. TK's fault. It wasn't. There's no way it was Carlos's fault. <clears throat> no, no. I'm just mad. Yeah, they're not together. Amanda, did you really watch the episode? I did. Sure? I swear I did. I don't. <laughs> where did I? miss that that's there like was a few it. different scenes did you look at our chat because that's what all of us were upset about no because i watched i watched it like the she day watched after it later yeah okay, okay. and that so i was trying to ignore you guys yeah but they're not <laughs> together and nancy was trying her best to get like answers yeah she was, she was like really ribbon on like, like come on tell me i'm trying to think like watch me I'm, I'm gonna have to go and watch it again tomorrow to see and i'm probably gonna did be you- like oh yeah 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 did you notice that they were weird when they like run into each other too? Oh, like, I do remember that. I'm sorry. I think the spirits <laughs> in my house are just really messing with me. You're messing with me too now that you've told me about it. So. <laughs> That's what I told her. I don't think Tiffany wasn't here. I don't know if you can see the lights. Watch your lights. They keep flickering. That's creepy. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? My friend, Jeff. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Megan, Jeff, weird. It's my friend Jeff. Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay, Carlos, now that I'm watching it, I'm like, I know, it's, what's happening? It's distracting. Let's talk about Carlos, don't you think? Yes, we need to talk about Carlos because <laughs> oh, now you guys have just like completely thrown me off. But no, yeah. I remember that. I remember them being like awkward to, yeah. to each other whenever they like towards the end. When yeah, they met at the they, furniture store. Yeah, in the furniture we store, saw yeah. we saw Carlos. He got called to what, like a break in at the furniture store, and it was the vets. And it's the vets, which was, I mean, Carlos is just like the best person ever. I love him. So sad. Um, I know. I was like, oh my god, let them stay. They're just trying to get in a bed. Yeah, right? I know. He gets but, into a home, and then of course, roof collapses because that's course. exactly what needs to happen with for all these homeless people. Mm-hmm you know but carlos again kind of saves the day he gets him out of there um that's when we ended up seeing mateo actually was at that wasn't it when they brought in the best man for the job no no that That was the the half decapitated guy oh that's right that was insane i i was so focused on tk and carlos that i forgot that happened until you just said that now it's like vivid pictures like oh my god yeah that was crazy (laughs) i thought his head was gone let me just say yeah i was like whoa y'all people in texas man you can't be doing dumb stuff like that <laughs> it happens every day <laughs> <laughs> well i mean i'm sure it happens here too so let's not i was gonna say here in like kentucky that. it happens there too trust me <laughs> i guarantee it probably dumber <laughs> um but yeah so the roof collapses uh oh. that part stressed me out too because then we have to send like 
Mm-hmm. Judd. Okay, Judd is my guy. So yeah. I'm like, Judd, you're going to be a daddy. I'm going to need you to be careful here. Okay. Yep. But and who course, are they going to go in there and find? Oh, the, the daughter, girl. The, Which the girl, another right. Carlos, like, great job of noticing that she wasn't there and that mm-hmm. she was probably still trapped there. So, awesome. poor girl he was, wasn't on he was pretty fantastic this episode. He was. Yeah. This was a very sh- Carlos strong. This is what I'm saying. Yeah. This is why it has to be mm-hmm. TK's fault because Carlos did not do anything wrong. I guarantee it. Exactly. <laughs> they're just they're they're just gonna boost it up. Like oh, and Carlos I'm gonna feel like so crap. Great. And then you're gonna that it was find Carlos out that, that Carlos did something. Did something. <laughs> eat my words over here. <laughs> I'm gonna stand by it. No, because Carlos seemed pretty upset when he saw him. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. He seemed more bothered than mm-hmm. TK did, which. That could mean that could go either way. That could mean that Carlos screwed up and it's trying, but no, no I, can't I think that. you know what I think. I'm gonna throw this out here and I don't right. know. Let's hear I it. think because we, they've already said they loved each other, and that part didn't seem to freak TK out. Mm-mm. Wonder if Carlos tries to propose and that brings back some sort of weird flashback to TK proposing to that guy and he like ends it. Could be or. TK asks him to marry him, and Carlos says, "No, I'm not ready yet." Oh no! I just turned it around on you. I just Uno reversed you. (laughs) Yeah, no, I'd be I'd be mad at Carlos then. So I'm just gonna. (laughs) Because I'm saying, if TK asks another person to marry him and they say no, it's just gonna completely break him. Yeah, that's true. Shoot, I like your theory better, but now I don't. I don't so. Right. hopefully not do, hopefully I do. not i don't want it to happen i'm not saying that yeah uh but yeah so the shelter collapsing we keep getting distracted here by carlos mm-hmm. and tk because that was clearly the most part of the important part of the episode <laughs> apparently <laughs> but like paul so we've got paul in danger too because that roof collapsed kind of like right on top of him i know and we don't know his fate yet i know we and don't I'm, know anybody's fate because they anything. didn't give us any endings to any of these storylines. I'm going to share something with just you guys. Well, okay. everybody's going to hear. <laughs> I've had a really bad feeling something is going to happen to Paul. Oh, and I've no. had this feeling since like episodes before, ever since his mom came to visit. Oh, I've just had, I, I've just had this like heavy. Yeah. And I hope not because I love Paul. Mm hmm love his character but i don't know i i keep getting this just this weird the sense thing is, well i don't know i know i don't know i mean someone is gonna be like hurt severely and i, I mean i know we've seen previews of tk in hospital so maybe everyone else will be okay um yeah. but i don't know i mean i think it's it's hard to tell because what we've got well, we've got marjan who's in her car accident out mm-hmm. in the cold who knows what's gonna happen there we got paul which judd too because i mean even though he wasn't right there was judd and mateo there or just judd somebody was with judd it had been mateo right yes but was it because they're not on yeah it was mateo because somebody else was there yeah because he so, said they had to hurry up and go through the building faster yeah yeah there are several of them so they're all there i mean like i know it kind of looks like it's fallen on paul but i mean it it could very well be something happened to one of them too and then we know by the previews that tk is going to fall under the ice trying to save that boy next episode oh how is that child still alive well yeah it's because that makes no sense the timing I, like when we saw that in the beginning then it said like so many hours earlier so like uh, that kid being found the other hours ice, earlier may, yeah it may have not happened yet at the end of this episode if that makes sense but already, we already showed it at the it. beginning of the episode because they I went back in time that. Yeah. yeah, I forgot about that too. They like to do that. Say, man, how, how long has this kid been? <laughs> I mean, you wouldn't be able three to days that. later. Because, <laughs> gosh, you could, I mean, how long could you survive? It couldn't be that long, like under that kind of conditions, I don't think. I, I don't think so. I'm, I was telling, I'm like, break the ice. I was like, oh my gosh, if you break the ice and you're going into. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> there was like a rock there. Couldn't you like, get on top of that rock? And I would have been like, I completely know. breaking that ice. Sorry, I don't know what you do. Oh, I don't think I can sit there and wait for nine one one while staring at somebody. Yeah, I mean you can't do it. No, no, 
I would be trying to break it in, but how sweet oh, no. one's coming. Sense. Just wait. wait a minute. <laughs> we didn't discuss that old couple. How sweet were they saving those turtles, though? I mean, kind of stupid. I know. Yeah. Sweet, you know? sweet, yet also crazy. I know. But I, I did I didn't it. understand what they were doing. And he kept going with the turtle. I'm like, wait, are you? Yeah, they're saving the turtle. <laughs> are you saving the turtle? <laughs> it's cute. Though, Which I mean, but... save the turtles. I want right. to behind I mean... it. But Right, out there. Be, maybe you shouldn't do it in a blizzard. I don't yeah, know. Maybe. Not I mean, I think that's actually when the turtles need to be saved. Well, I know. But... <laughs> it's true. Well, they need to be saved all the time. <laughs> Let me get politically correct here. Look, I'm just saying, like, be careful when you're walking out on a frozen lake trying to save a turtle. Maybe I sound terrible. I don't know. But self preservation yeah. over here. I'm probably not going out there to save the turtle. I don't know. No. I wouldn't. I'd shake. I mean, I'll pick them up off the middle of the road, but that's as far as I'm going. Yeah, I'm not walking across a frozen lake for it. I'm sorry. That mm-hmm. sounds so heartless of me, but if it's between me and the turtle, choosing me. I'm choosing me. <laughs> Terrible. Hi, number one. So, y'all, I, we have like flown through this. We have the, but it really wasn't a very full. Nothing happened. It that seemed like some a lot happened, yet also nothing happened. Mm-hmm. Almost all at the same time, which is really weird. Well, they gave yeah. us a lot of stuff, but no like answers. Yeah, we it's didn't like, have we'll a find out next week anything. everything. Yeah. So it's like this week is just kind of like giving you like pre quill mm-hmm. stuff. It's just it was kind of a boring. Also, I did not realize this was season three. <laughs> Just came you out. Think it was? I thought it was just like a winter break coming back. I and honestly, it was just confusion, just because I had just caught up on nine one one and nine one one loans. Right, I just watched them all. So then I just jumped into this one. I was just thinking it was the next episode. <laughs> I didn't realize so, it was the start of a whole new season. New season, which Good was morning. not a very. Oh, no, I think you you guys could have done a whole lot better. Oh, for sure. With your premiere that you guys amped us up for for weeks. Getting well, us everything all they showed in their preview is going to happen next episode, next basically. Yeah. yeah. So why tell us now? Right. Like, why, why are you telling me everything that's going to happen later on? I don't know. I don't they should have done a two hour premiere and put it that's all in That's what one. they should have done. Yeah. Yeah. Agreed. They should have. They should have definitely. I would have liked that a whole lot better. Mm-hmm. I'm not, I feel like every show we've been watching lately has had a cliffhanger and I'm getting real tired of it. <laughs> At least every, like, what's the other one I just finished watching? Oh, Emily in Paris. That looked I'm not, left. Sh- I'm oh. not there yet. I'm not there yet. You're not there? No. Nope. Okay. So I can't say anything. Where are you? I just started season two. I'm like on like episode two or three. God, will you hurry up? My Why kids won't so leave slow? me alone. Oh, so I can't kids are home. It. Yeah i'm trying so preview for next week what do we think everyone's fate is going to be what do you all think do we think marjan what do we think is going to be happening with her um i think she's going to be fine after the accident maybe a little out of it but i wonder how far she was from like owen's house like i wonder is she going to be like go back and help him with that guy or whatever i wonder like i don't know i was also close to the lake because the old couple's oh. van is what ran her off the road oh that i didn't catch oh, that oh i didn't catch that either i couldn't i couldn't tell I what catch, Tiffany. she swerved okay good job yeah so she's close to the boy under the ice so maybe she's gonna go help them and all that too awesome. that'd be nice okay. i would love to see that even though the guys left us on a cliffhanger if you yeah well we know the medic team's gonna get there Mm-hmm. so and we see tk is gonna TK. fall because we showed that in the preview for this week's episode T- tk is gonna fall in and then oh, next no. week's episode shows him like hooked up to a bunch of machines oh, yeah. no. like how many near-death experiences is this guy gonna have right oh, like gosh. it's too many i feel like diamond one's turning into grays man it's trying yeah and lone star's bad guys for yes. like doing stuff but oh. this is gonna be the way i think that we're gonna bring him and carlos back together mm-hmm 
Yeah, I do too. Maybe if it was him that proposed, Carlos is going to be like all like, maybe he's going to realize that he can't live without TK and he's going to like decide he wants to marry him. That would be wonderful. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. And then Paul and Judd, I think it's going to be TK that's going to be the one in danger. So I think everybody else is going to be okay. Yeah. Just because I don't think they'll make more than one person have something bad happen to them. Yeah. And it's the very beginning of a season. Oh, um, yeah. That's true. Not very many shows will kill something, somebody off in the first couple episodes. It's not really heard of. I yeah. mean, knock on wood, it could happen. But it's, just, it's not as likely. Yeah. That's true. But yeah, I'm, I, I'm feeling better now that I know Marjan's right next to that, those people. I didn't even catch that. That's awesome. And if anything, those people could help Maybe her. Maybe they can help her. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I mean, but then you're leaving the little boy. <laughs> That's yeah. true. Yeah. Never mind. We can we can just keep talking about this all day. <laughs> Who knows? No, I think. And then I guess that was, that takes care of everybody, right? I don't want them to keep the 126 split up this whole season. I really kind of yeah. want to get that like back together. Like I don't I don't want this to drag on. No, I don't either. So well, I, I think there was a reason that the wrecking ball stopped. Yeah, I think we're gonna yeah. see them again real soon. I hope so. Because they I need them back in that firehouse. I need everything to be just like it was. Like yes. <laughs> yeah. I want some normalcy. Yeah, please. So I guess All right. So do we want to say goodbye? Mm, yeah, I think that's it. I think uh I mean I should be prepared enough to be able to tell everybody what we're gonna talk about next week, but I'm not. So I'm not really sure. Um I know that we will be back again to discuss more This Is Us and 911. Lone Star next week but I don't know what our Wednesday episode is going to be you'll just have to tune in and find out it'll be a surprise because Mm. I'm not sure (laughs) that's it so bye guys Bye. bye bye